Uh, the goal of the head-to-toe assessment is to do all of the systems on the sheet that you've been provided with and to go in a head-to-toe systematic manner. Now I may not exactly follow down the sheet uh, item by item. I have my own system that I use, but I am incorporating all of it in my assessment. So uh, we'll start and I have Chloe as my patient today. I've gathered my equipment. I have clean disposable gloves here, a tongue blade, pen light, a bath blanket is on here for privacy, and I have a stethoscope. I have privacy in the room. I have a tablet put curtains up. I have washed my hands already. I've reviewed her chart to see what the background is on her and my patient. I've already performed vital signs and I've documented those. The bed is at a height uh, as high as it will go, but I would prefer to have it more at a waist level so that I'm not stooping during the examination. I have adequate um, lighting and we'll start with that. So first I'm going to introduce myself. Hi Chloe. Hi. Hi, my name is Yvonne Chapman and I'm going to be your registered nurse today. And I'd like to do a head to toe assessment and it's going to take probably 15 to 20 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I've got to ask you a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Do you know what day it is of the week? The 13th. Okay, the 13th. And what day of the week is it? Saturday. Alright, what year is it? 2003. Who's the president? President. Okay. And who's our film man today? Brian Chapman. All right. So, by my questioning, I know that she's alert and oriented, times three, person, place, and time. And um, she's given me consent to do the procedure. I um, am going to give you some other information that goes along with the general survey. Her hygiene is clean, her mood and affect are both pleasant, and she's cooperative. Uh, there's no signs of acute illness or distress. Her posture, she's lying in bed, but it looks like there's no um, deficit in strength from what, it, what I can see at first. And so we'll proceed with our examination. I'll go ahead and start with the top and um, doing a pupil check. And I'll have her look just straight ahead for me. Normally what I would do is I would dim the lights, but we're in the lab, so that's really not possible for me to do. But I'm going to look in one eye at a time with my pen light, shine it in, watch the pupil react. So that's direct constriction. And then when I make my second swipe in, I'm watching the other pupil, the opposite eye, and that eye also constricts. So that was direct, we'll do it on this side. That's direct constriction, and then on the second swipe, I watch the opposite pupil, and it does constrict, and that's consensual constriction. That is normal, and that her pupils are equal and round, react to light, and the size is approximately four millimeters. Good. Are you feel blinded? Yeah. All right. At this point, I'm going to do inspection of her mouth, the oral fairness. And I'll put on my clean disposable gloves. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking at her face and it is symmetrical. The color is pink, tan, and there's no lesions. I'll use my pen light and then I have the tongue blade to push the tongue out of the way. Okay. Can you go ah? Uh? Ah! Uh. Very nice. She's got a big piece of gum in there. Other than that, her teeth are in good repair. There's no cavities. And her gums, the mucous membranes, and her tongue are all pink and moist, and there's no lesions on those. Her tonsils are small in size, and there's no purulent drainage or exudate on those. Her lips are moist and pink also. So that completes her oral inspection. 
Now we're going to move down to the upper extremities and do range of motion. Normally I would do range of motion on both sides of the body to compare side to side to see if things are symmetrical. For the purposes of this film, I'm only going to do one side. So I put a good hand on her shoulder and then I'm going to support her arm. And then we'll bring up her arm like this and that's internal rotation and then external rotation. And then I'll bring an arm out, abduction, and then adduction. And there's no pain with that movement. Her elbow, we're going to do uh, extension and then flexion. And then I'm going to do a wrist. And we're going to have her flex, extend, and then hyperextend. Very nice. And then we'll have her spread her fingers out, abduction, bring them together, adduction, and then circumflexion. She's going to touch each finger to her thumb, and those all look good. And if you, did you have any pain with all movement? And I didn't feel any crepitus on any of the joints as she performed those movements. So good job. I'm going to test for arm strength now at this point, so I'm going to cross my arms. I'm going to give her two fingers for each hand. Our dominant hands are together. She's right-handed, I'm right-handed. So I know that the, I can get a better uh, idea of what the hand strength is. So go ahead and squeeze. Ooh, she's nice and strong. Good job. And then we're going to push. And she's going to pull against me. So she's got strong upper arm strength and strong hand grasp. Good job. While I'm here at her hands, let's go ahead and do a radial pulse check, and I check side to side, and those are three plus and equal, and kind of a bounding amplitude. We're going to check capillary refill as a brisk, again checking side to side, and those are good. I'm going to start now with her lung assessment, and I watch her chest movement. Her chest is rising and falling evenly, regularly, unlabored. Uh, no problem with that, no distress. I'm going to auscultate her lung sounds and we're going to start posteriorly. So I'm going to have her sit on up for me. Normally I, this is fine for a patient to have them sit just like this and I would be able to hear her. But for this film I'm going to have her turn sideways so that you can see where I'm putting my stethoscope. Nice job. Okay. I give her instructions to breathe in and out through her mouth so that I can auscultate well. Nice job. Just want to point out that I used the diaphragm on my stethoscope. I went from top to bottom and I always check side to side, uh, moving in an S formation. Okay, we placed for posterior, posterior lung sounds, you can go six to eight places, and then lateral lung sounds, two places on each side will cover you adequately. Okay, go ahead and come back over. Okay, now we're going to listen to the anterior of her chest and again auscultating for lung sounds and she's going to take some nice deep breaths for me. Breathing in and out to her mouth. Nice deep breath. Nice job. So I, again, you can do six to eight stethoscope placements for the anterior side. Her lung sounds are clear. There's no adventitious sounds. Now I'm on the anterior to the chest, so I'm going to go ahead and do cardiac heart tones. 
and I'm going to find the second intercostal space on the right side of the sternal border. This places my stethoscope with the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the aortic valve. And now I'm going to move over to the left sternal border and the second intercostal space and I'm over the pulmonic valve. The S2 heart tone is heard loudest over the aortic and pulmonic valve. Now I'm going to move down to the fourth intercostal space. This places my stethoscope over the tricuspid valve. And now I'm going to move to the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line, left side of the chest. And I'm over the mitral valve. The tricuspid and the mitral valve is where I hear S1 heart tone the best, the loudest. And while I'm over the mitral valve area, this is the apex of the heart, I'm going to get my apical pulse rate, and I am going to count this for a full minute. Nice job. Her apical pulse rate is 88 and her heart tones S1 and S2 are heard clearly without any extra sounds. Her rhythm is regular. And now as I was working with her on her um, anterior and posterior chest, her skin, there's no lesions. Uh, the color is pink and it's warm and dry. Also with her upper extremities, skin is pink warm and dry with no lesions. Alrighty, now we're going to move on to abdominal assessment. For the purposes of this film, I am not going to expose her belly, but I am going to lower the bed down because we want to have her in a more flat position. Is that okay? Okay, first what I do with abdominal assessment is just look at the contour and you kind of step at the end of the bed and look more at eye level and her belly is slightly rounded. You're looking at the contour to see if there's uh, asymmetry of any kind and it is symmetrical. There's no noticeable bulging. Then I'm going to auscultate with the diaphragm of my stethoscope. I'm splitting her abdomen up into four quarters using the umbilicus or belly button as a midpoint and then you always are going to start auscultation in the right lower quadrant. Your textbook tells you to listen in each quadrant for one minute. For the purpose of this film I'm just going to listen for approximately 15 seconds in each quadrant. Normal bowel sounds are documented as being 5 to 35 gurgles within one minute. So I start in the right lower quadrant and then we move clockwise and listen in all four quadrants. Okay, her bowel sounds are active in all four quadrants or normal active. And now I'm going to ask her, are you having any pain in your belly? No. Okay. Now if she was having pain of any kind, I would palpate that region last. But since she's not having any pain, I'll just start in the right lower quadrant and use the same clockwise method. We're only going to palpate a half an inch in depth. And I'm going to use the palmar surface of my hand to see if I am feeling for any uh, tumors, 
bulges, bumps. Normally the skin would be exposed and I would be looking at her skin to see if it's pink, warm, and dry uh, or any lesions. Okay. Does that hurt at all anywhere? Okay. As I'm doing palpation, I always want to look at my patient's face to see if I'm causing any pain. They will grimace, let you know if any area is tender at all. All right, we're going to move down to her lower extremities. Can I go ahead and remove your sheet? Okay, here your pillow looks like it needs some adjusting. There you go. All right, lower extremities. What we're going to do with this one is um, put a hand on their hip joint, and then I'm going to do range of motion. We're going to do uh, external rotation, internal rotation. And then with her knee, I'm going to have her help me. We're going to do flexion, extension. And I didn't palpate any crepitus with any of those motions. It didn't look like it caused any pain. And now with her foot, we'll just do flexion, or ex extension, and then flexion, extension, flexion. And then we want to do with the sole of her foot, inversion, and then eversion. Inversion, eversion. And then we'll have her fan her toes out. Good. And bring them back together. Nice job. Any pain with any of that motion? All right. I'm going to check for leg strength. We're going to have her just bring up her legs. Oh, good. She's nice and strong. Then we're going to do a pedal push pull. Push on my hands. There you go. Pull your toes up. Nice and strong lower extremity movement. While we're down here at the feet, let's check for pedal pulses on the top of your foot. Is the dorsalis pedis. Hers are palpable at 3 plus and regular. And then right inside your leg along the malleus, which is your ankle, is where the posterior tibial pulse is, and hers are both 3 plus. And then while we're here, we want to check for pedal edema. Um, pressing on the tibia of each leg and there's no edema and then we're going to check for capillary refill all right and that's brisk on both sides again looking at the skin of her legs there's no lesions it's pink tanned color and warm and dry all right i'm going to cover you back up your findings were normal chloe do you have any questions for me no all right. Now at this point, what I need to do is um, make sure that she's safe. So if the rails were up before I started, I need to put those back up. I'm going to lower the bed back into a low position. Uh, open the room back up. I'm going to put a call light within reach. I need to wash my hands, and then I need to document my findings. If there's anything abnormal, I would let my clinical instructor know or physician, whatever was applicable. And I believe we're done. Thank you for your attention. And good luck on the checkoff. The nurse forgot something. Guess what it is.